What's up everybody? It's Cosmo the Coder here and welcome to October's Humble Monthly Review. That's right, it's October. It's amazing to think we're actually almost close to the very end of the year. And we're in the month of course where scary creatures appear at the end in your, on your door demanding sweeties. But that's later on in the month. Anyway, we've gone past the first Friday and so now it's time to have a little look at what Humble Monthly has in store for us. So, eight games this year this time around and first up we have a game called Slime Rancher. Now Slime Rancher is an early access game um, which is currently uh, about 15 pounds or about 20 bucks for you Americans. Um, you basically play as a young rancher that sets out for life like a thousand light years away from Earth and you try and make a living wrangling uh, slimes. It's basically a sandbox game where you sort of have to solve problems using a variety of different creatures and the tools at your disposal. It kind of reminds me a lot of um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Pikmin, sort of in a way. I don't know. I, maybe I'm be sort of being too. Um, I don't know what you want to call it. So it's not. It's not quite an exact match, but it's 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 fairly similar in terms of that you use different coloured creatures for different sort of reasons and so forth. It looks like a lot of fun. Um, generally, it's quite it's it's quite well received, as you can see from the reviews. Ninety four percent recently, ninety five percent overall. It's still in development, but we'll see what kind of materialises out of it. Hey. Uh, next up is a game you should have heard about. I'll turn turn this video off. Hotline Miami 2, wrong number. It, this is the basically the brutal conclusion, as, as they sort of determine it, that um, of the Hotline Miami saga. So there's only two parts of it, and basically it's as violent and as nasty as the first game. So, so basically expect to see plenty of pixel art, gore, and plenty of weaponry. It's a, basically a top-down... 2D pixel sh graphic shooter game where you graphic gory shoot. No, I'll try that again because I'm reading sort of every other word. It's a top down 2D pixel graphic gory shooter that, as I said, finishes off sort of the whole Hotline Miami uh, plot line. So if you've played the first one or not the second one, this is definitely a game you'll be interested in. But to be honest with you, at the same time, if you played the first one, you most more than likely got the second one. Now, this does add sort of more sort of content to the game and sort of adds more sort of features to it but the general sort of consensus about Hotline Miami 2 can be that it doesn't really add much in terms of story or much of in sort of that it's sort of a it sort of feels like an extension of the first game rather than a sequel but that might be by design it's really going to be how you feel about it really good reviews 90% recently 89% overall you know blast away <laughs> Next up, a game that uh, I've basically been meaning to sort of get into at some point because I'm a big fan of, of adventure games. It's Deponia Doomsday. It's basically the fourth game. Um, so, <clears throat> blah. it's the fourth game in a sort of series of games based on a sort of um, a, a, a sort of a, a place where a game where you basically play characters and uh, set on a, a futuristic world, which is basically a junk world. And this is basically the fourth game in sort of the series. Originally, there was a, it was a trilogy originally, but they continued on with this and made a sequel. It's basically a point-and-click adventure game set in the Deponia universe, and it basically involves time travel and trying to sort of stop the planet from being destroyed. Um, it's got some, as you can see from the actual trailer, it's, it's beautifully hand-drawn graphics. It's sort of on a 2.5D sort of uh, plane or engine or like that. Good reviews, sort of 88% recently, 89% overall. 76 on Metacritic. Some people don't like this game because it's kind of... Um, they sort of were expecting the trilogy to sort of end everything. This kind of feels like that awkward sequel overall. But... It's not it's not a bad game, especially considering the price. You know, it's twenty three ninety nine on Steam, or about thirty bucks for uh, for Americans, but not a bad deal at all, I think. Next up is a game that kind of looks like um, I don't know some some sort of somewhere between sort of a very casual sort of railroad tycoon. I'm not. It's difficult to sort of explain what it is without 
it's, a, it's sort of sounding like all the different sort of sim games and things, but it's not really a simulation kind of game, at least based on what people have been saying in review wise. Train Valley is about seven pounds on Steam or 10 bucks. Um, it's basically a casual sort of strategy management game where you build railways and manage traffic systems to help build cities and you complete missions during sort of a story-esque mode or even if you want to a sort of random mode. So it's kind of a somewhere between sort of Sim Sim City and Railroad Tycoon. It's, it's difficult to kind of quantify that. It is kind of a casual game though. You're not, it's not something that you're going to get sort of really into in simulation wise. But generally speaking, a nice little game. It's won some fairly good, fairly interesting little awards here. There have some indie awards and some other things as a sort of a, the best casual game. So. Not bad, you know, not bad at all. Review wise, 80% recently, 92% overall. Metacritic, 69%. You can't, you know, it's not, it's, it's a nice little game compared, considering. Now, a game that looks absolutely ridiculous Action Hank it is about £11 on Steam, or about 15 bucks. It's uh, <laughs> basically an action sort of racing game. Where you control a toy action figure and using your momentum and the physics and a grappling hook you sort of complete courses against a time limit and earn medals basically you run around a room on a sort of toy race car track and avoiding obstacles and everything it's it's kind of a sort of a, a racing runner game it looks his hilariously sort of stupid in, in its own right but the good thing is it does have an, its own editor so you can create your own tracks and it is multiplayer in some ways so you can actually, you know you can compete against friends or just on leaderboards so overall you know if it's if racing games are your kind if that kind of sort of zany racing kind of games are your kind of thing it's not really my kind of thing but it looks quite fun let's put it that way <laughs> Next up, Grim Dawn. Now, Grim Dawn was actually the game that was sort of, um, sort of, there was sort of the the tantalizer, shall we say, for, for last month. And last, and it's basically a uh, action RPG hack and slash game, which basically a Diablo clone to some degree. It's twenty pounds on Steam or twenty five dollars. Um, basically, the whole idea is that you're in an apocalyptic fantasy world where humanity is at the brink of an extinction. You know, iron and gold are, are highly valued objects, highly valued objects, highly valued materials. Sorry, <laughs> and you know, trust. You know, people don't trust each other. It's basically you know a doomsday esque sort of thing. It's got complex character development apparently, and hundreds of unique items, crafting and quests with all kinds of choice and consequences. It sounds like a really sort of deep and um, strong RPG. And considering the reviews, it actually reflects that quite well. 89% recently, 93% overall, and 83% on Metacritic. It's an RPG, a, a Diablo clone that holds its own apparently. You know, it looks good, it apparently plays quite well. And a lot of people are quite impressed with its ability. Some people criticise it for sort of its storyline being not necessarily as deep or as meaningful as it could be. But that I find things like that, especially with plots, it's kind of difficult because people do get it, get sometimes do get things, and other people don't. You know, it's kind of subjective. But be that as it may, it's still an interesting kind of game. Next up, a game that um, well. <laughs> is that it makes it it's uh, has only just recently come out and is only part of the humble monthly sort of debut a game called Th i suppose thoth is probably the best sort of word um it's only just come out on steam it's currently 559 on steam or 779 for uh, us you american guys um this is mainly because it's 20 percent off because it's brand new um the review wise i basically are pr pretty good Overall, at the moment, 100% people like the game, but there's not that many reviews on Steam, so it's overall. It's made by the same people. It made by people, a studio called 140. That I and I've forgotten what game it was called that they made, but they they've been they make they make some fairly good um, sort of casual games. This is actually a casual sort of twin stick shooter game um, where you you can either play you can play alone or with a friend. And the idea is that you sort of, as you saw, shoot these sort of polygonal shapes and solve puzzles to try and carry up to, to survive as long as possible. Not a bad little game, but 
see it, well, see how you feel about this. Finally, the Humble Original is a game that I'm going to guess is called Fidel. <laughs> and Fidel is basically a sort of dungeon crawler-esque game where you basically have to sort of not cross your own path. So you have to sort of plan how you're going to cross each sort of, um, I suppose, level is the right sort of word, collecting the various objects that you need into and getting out from the other side. It looks quite a little clever little game to sort of flip the whole sort of dungeon crawler on its head a little bit. So, you know, it's certainly an interesting little game. Now, and finally then, the game that um, they, they dangle in front of us is Stardew Valley. Now, if you haven't heard of Stardew Valley, where have you been? Because you should have heard about it. It's a, it's an extremely well received, at least based on the Steam reviews. We're, we're talking 96 recently and 97% overall, and eight, Metacritic is 88%. It's basically an RPG simulation sort of farming simulation game, but apparently, but it's got even more depth than sort of a farming simulator. You know, you basically um, inherit a, you play as a character, and you inherit a farm, and you have to sort of um, build it up from scratch. I'm not going to go too much into it because this is just sort of the, the tantalizer, but Stardew Valley, definitely an, a good game for a bundle for next month, hopefully. So, all right, well, that, that pretty much it, is it in terms of that. As always, you've got all the usual you know, charity and everything. So, what do we think about the bundle? Well, it's definitely a big improvement over the last few bundles. Now, last month's bundle was, wasn't bad. This one is definitely a lot better. You've got... Definitely some very recent, you know, a fairly recent adventure game, Hotline Miami 2, maybe not as strong as Hotline Miami, but definitely a good game. Slime Rancher looks good, uh, Train Valley looks fairly fun, Action Hank looks ridiculous, but hey. <laughs> Grim Dawn, powerful looking RPG, definitely. I'm quite impressed with the bundle, I quite like this bundle. It's definitely improving over the summer sort of months. September and, and to the September bundle. So I will give this a nice uh, maybe seven and a half. Seven and a half out of ten. Does that sound about right to you guys? You know, it, it's good. It could be better, but it's it's quite a strong nice little bundle, I think, definitely. And that, as they say, is that for it. So, as always guys, thanks for watching my review video. Hopefully you've gained some insight into how good or bad Humble Monthly is, and you're going to make a decision if you want to buy it or not. Um, otherwise, keep watching the videos and see what, what you have missed out in. And yes, I do know these videos are kind of silly in terms of that I'm just showing you what you've missed out on. You can't get these, this, get these games, sadly. You can't get this bundle. You have to see what's in the next month. But that's the way Humble Monthly works. Uh, as always, guys, like and subscribe for more stuff like this. Comment, share, do all the usual sort of social media sort of stuff. And hopefully I will see you on Tuesday for another Humble Bundle review. Otherwise, I might see you on Tuesday during my Shadow Warrior 2 playthrough. But we can only hope and see. Thanks for watching, guys. I have been Cosmo the Coder, and as I always say, may you have happy gaming.